Another guy said to me, he was giving a talk on uh, the guy that raised a million family lobsters a year to sell that best buy and loans and Publix. He put on a bunch of sign every other week. So, of course, he only made fail, and there were only like 10 different guys that he made a million of, because they were the ones that could handle it. Okay, so now let's go to, uh, first of all, is there anybody got any questions on the on a certain problem they have. So far, you know. Okay, nobody has any problems? Well, we can make this. You may. What causes the um, new shoot with the use of hopefully flower to turn brown or black? The new shoot turns black? Or the flowers turn black? The, the flower spike turns black. Okay. The flower spike turns black. What, what about the, what about the pseudobulb? The is fine. I never see anything like that. Uh, it might be thrips kill the spike. It's not a bacteria or a fungus, it's usually an insect that does that. So we're not going to talk about thrips. Okay, so, anyways, uh, who's a member of the AOS? <laughs> Well, you're missing out that because, uh, <laughs> and you also can't be very serious. The American Art Society puts out this uh, beautiful book, magazine every month, and it has kits for what, uh, what you could do for your orchids when you have problems with them. So here's a whole remedy. Aspirin, just three quarter of one 325 milligram tablet for gallon water helps protect plants from fungal and viral pathogens when used at a spray. More is not better, do not exceed the amount. So you get the Plato, Plato Masters, I haven't seen the minute better time with all our ibuprofen, just Plato Cetacetic Acid, and unfortunately you got, don't get a teratonin, and unfortunately you got to measure out three quarters of an aspirin per gallon. Three quarters. <coughs> I don't know why they made it so difficult. Yeah. But uh, here's an idea for a preventive thing that doesn't cost anything. You're a three quarter of an aspirin. If you get a headache, you can What? What does it prevent? What? What does it prevent? I didn't hear it. Who knows what this is supposed to prevent? Who was listening? I'm just a bacteria side. I'm just a bacteria side. Bacteria. Yeah. 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 Also, if you were a member of the American Market Society, you could go to their webinars, which are web, or, uh, web presentations about every kind of thing that you can imagine. 
I just recently read one of uh, grow lights for the orchids, which I have a lot of grow lights because I have a lab with the uh, baby orchids, and it was just amazing what I could learn on the AOS uh, webinar. Plus, they have stuff like uh, uh, Sue Bottom is a famous uh, writer and orchidist who's made a name for herself with uh, her, her articles on this one. It's Orchid Disease Control, Bactericides and Fungicides. And I was going to make everybody a copy of this. Of course, they read at the bottom all contests copyright <laughs> by Sue and Terry. All rights reserved, no part. They be relayed, be reproduced or transmitted in any form by any means. So, well, too bad you can't see this. <laughs> okay, does anybody ever get uh, sooty mold on their orchid leaves? Yeah. Okay, silly bowl I found was easily taken off. This is something I learned in my lab. Clorox will spray right on the leaf. Wow. This is Clorox. Oh. <laughs> you need it on that right table. On the leaf, and then you spray hydrogen peroxide next over the Clorox. Wow. So what happens is the hydrogen peroxide neutralizes the Clorox. And if, in the lab, we use hydrogen peroxide and Clorox, and at the end of the day, we put our tweezers in the Clorox and then the hydrogen peroxide, and you can see the bubbles coming off, and then the, uh, then the instrument is sterile, plus it doesn't rust. And also, when we went to, uh, well, Judy's not here, but we went to Judy Wagner's one time and she had, uh, Sunny gold on all her catacetas, and I told her to spray it with bleach or any of these things. There's another, this, is, this one has uh, bleach, but there are other ones that have ammonia, quaternary <coughs> ammonia, which is just as good for you just. You just put it straight, you don't mix it with anything? Yes, this isn't very strong. No concern, like say, ooh, that's nice. You said you spray the hydrogen peroxide right in the Spray it on. Yeah. When you put the hydrogen peroxide on, it bubbles up. And then you wipe it off with a paper towel. Or a rag if you have a lot of rags. And it wipes it right off. It gets that city bowl off, which is almost impossible to get off any other way. If, if you would like to see how nice it looks. <clears throat> but of course, you should have a magnifying glass to check what's going on. Uh, brown leaf tip. What causes that? Usually not a fungus. Except if it looks like this. Uh -oh, where'd that go? There. There's one common fungus that People think, oh, well, that's a uh, brown leaf tip and they use too much fertilizer. You see this? You see, here? You see how it's scalloped? <coughs> Anybody ever see that on a leaf tip? It's usually not on cat heads, it's usually on uh, the thin leaf uh, like catacetums. You see how it's scalloped? See how it's scalloped? <laughs> You can't, and you could get it on your yard plants, like your, what do we have it on, uh, what are those things that grow up a tree, up a palm tree, uh, what? Philodendron. Yeah, philodendron. We had it on our philodendron, but I couldn't figure out why the plants underneath the trees by the philodendron were always getting in there. <laughs> That's probably the most common one that I've Which seen one? around us. Which one? Is, oh, the scallops. The scallops. So if you spray that with any fungicide, it'll kill it, but it won't make it go away. So you have to trim the end of the leaf off and then spray it. Jane, what do you call that? What? <laughs> 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 
Yeah, it's a pocket. I call it. And then do you cut it off? <laughs> and you cut it off. Yeah. Down it to the grease. I call it, uh, you know, I don't know what I call it. I call it yeah. Nardia, but they seem to call it as fat notes. With it's typical <coughs> alternating beds of dead tissue. So that you would spray your plant with a fungus to keep it from coming back and then you kick out to cut off the dead stuff too. Mm -hmm. And that's a very common thing because it also goes on other plants. Like I said, the uh, philodendron, and I mean that philodendron was 40 feet up in the air on a palm tree. We had to tear the whole thing out finally in order to get rid of the infection. Okay, so. So we talked about, oh, and then of course your peroxide, if you give crown rot, I don't think it works, but uh, it's I don't know, somewhere they say if you get crown rot, your are off, just spray the crown with hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> I tried it, I didn't think it worked. I do usually throw away things with crown rot. <laughs> Uh, what is the percentage of hydrogen? This is 3%. Percent. And that's, this is what you spray on your boo boo. <laughs> but that's like very mild. In our lab, we have 30%, and that would burn right through your head. Okay, now when you get into real dangerous, into real serious uh, fungus and uh, bad looking things. Well, let me talk about black rot first. If you, who's growing their orchids outside? Who's growing their orchids in a greenhouse with controlled conditions? <laughs> well? No. We're hot. It's too hot down here for the greenhouse. Gatehouse. Okay. okay. <laughs> like you can put a roof over her, your greenhouse. Well, we'll call it a state house, but with a roof over it so it doesn't rain out. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody got that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, a couple of people. Trip. Okay, well, the thing is for it is you got to control the water in the rainy season. Unless you live by my house where it hasn't rained for three months. So, I think that my own theory is, is once the rainy season comes, you start getting a black rot, and supposedly black rot, I mean, that's where all of a sudden, like in the middle of a leaf, towards the axle. And you'll get towards the ear. Especially the new growths coming out, in the middle, they just turn black. And that's very deadly disease. And if it's not taken care of right away, and even if it is taken care of right away, frequently you just lose the plant. So what you gotta do is uh, try to control the water. So what I finally did was I put a roof over my shade house. Plus I had a greenhouse where I never got the black rot because I had a wet pad and it was cooler in there and, and that was the best way to go. But uh, most of these people are just casual orchid that said aren't serious about it. So, so uh, the best bet is just buy new ones and throw away the bad ones. <laughs> now, so anyway, you gotta cut off that black rot, cut down into the green, that put cinnamon on it and spray the plant. And usually, it was always in an area. They had a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, a little bit bigger plants, not seedlings, but a little bit bigger like that. So in this area, one or two would get it pretty soon, three or four would have it, because it's spread by the water. So whether it comes from the rain or even your overhead watering system, once you get that black rot, that's like a, a death sentence for that plant. <coughs> I eventually got to the point where it just threw it away. But you can't cut it off, coat the end with cinnamon. You can even uh, spray the Clorox right into the cup. I, I went away last week on Friday and I watered some up on little miniature um, plants. And they were fine, and I put it back where I keep it. And three days later, I came home, and the whole plant was collapsed. 
Okay. I never saw anything happen that fast in my life. It got ground up. Oh, wow. 150 died. Oh, oh. So painful. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? Everybody, the uh, famous grower up north is going to come speak at Revire and he had some really rare orchid hybrids that I wanted really badly. So I ordered them, and it was $200 for one, 150 for the other, sight unseen. So because uh, of COVID, he didn't show up to the meeting, but one of the guys went, met him halfway and brought the plants back for me, and everybody else that ordered them. So <laughs> I get it home, and I set it aside, and I said, well, I'm going to repot these, because it's always, always, I think it's better to repot for somebody else's mix, you never know what's going on. Uh, right in the middle of one was like a, not black rod, but rocks, you know, like this, the yellow stuff that are down right by the right. So, cow, $200, I divided it. What you do then, another guy that has a greenhouse and a, uh, has Catley, as he told me, after you've divided, spray the bleach right into the cup. Like, force it, in, force it into the cup and then coat it with uh, cinnamon. And I tried that once and it didn't work, but he says it works. Okay, who has fire blight? You have fire blight? What is it? I don't even know. <laughs> like those spiders all over. Huh? Spiders. Spiders? Oh, spiders are. What is it? We don't have fire bites? <coughs> Does anybody have fire bites? Does anybody know what it means, David? No. Yeah, I guess we don't have to worry about it. I've had it, I use it once, and I don't know why. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very good article. This is found with most people. Where's Andrea? Andrea's on the other side. She's probably the one that, she's the one that told me to do fungus. Oh, wow. But recently, people have been having this on their cat I guess I should have read this article. <laughs> 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 well, recently, people have been getting that was like sunburst. Oh. Did it do the vibe? I didn't do it. I did I I <laughs> Anyways, recently a lot of people put having like a discoloration on their cat lips. Oh, <laughs> 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 Happy look of it. Like the green. Yeah. It's a new fungus. Fungus is from fungi from South America. A lot of people have been asking about it. They wonder what they should do.
Okay, so what do you do about that? Well, there's not much you can do. You can bye, 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 bye. spray it with a fungicide, then you gotta let it grow out. Then of course you should put out the spray with the fungicide in, uh, you know, every couple weeks. What kind of fungicide? Well, whatever you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. Because you're not gonna go to Pop, are you? To get the good stuff. Because it's so far away. Don't you have a conversation? You can't come to my house because it's so far away. <laughs> I, I used to bear three in one. I never have a problem with that outside. I spray, I spray them every couple of weeks with a bear three in one. And there you go, bear three in one. Dirty. Uh, Where do you get it? Home Walmart. Home Depot. Home Depot. Home Depot. Okay. Yeah, I got it at Walmart. The bear products are excellent. That daconil is a fungicide, and that's a good one to use on your uh, orchids because it's number one that they haven't canceled it yet <coughs> because it works too good or it's killing the people. So that, that's been around a while and it's safe to use. D A C O N I L. So that's a good uh, general purpose fungicide you could use. I thought that if you go to like Busy Bee or <coughs> Say that again, Jamie. D A what? D A C O N D A C O N I L. If you go to like Busy B or the old fashioned hardware stores like uh, Ace Hardware or a neighborhood hardware store, they have like weird brands of uh, of uh, fungicides and insecticides that you usually don't find at Home Depot. So like. Thymol is a real good uh, fungicide that you could use as a general purpose over anything you say. Well, I think it's a fungus. So. That's systemic, Jamie. And this is systemic. What is that again? Thymol bill. Water and into the soil. I mix what you. I mix what teaspoon. What teaspoon per gallon that I spray it in? She's going to take a picture. Yeah, to put it toward the camera. Here's here. Oh, here. Teaspoon per gallon that I spray it on the leaf. You want it? I don't know. There we go. Here you go. That was a good side. Fair rod, uh, you, you can't get that at Home Depot or uh, Lowe's, but you can't get it at uh, out of the pop at uh, BWI or you know, the big deal places that have all, all the stuff for the nursery growers out in the. Yeah. Or else you could. Uh, Do you think Jim has it? Huh? Do you think Jim has it? Jim you know, it? Yeah. Or else you could call the. My daughter gets it. Ten people could chip in at bar. You know, this is just like $80, I guess. So you chip in it, that's everybody gets uh, in the last odd of years. It's 30 years old. Jane? Yeah. Earthing and bad rock, better sticker. 
Yes, you gotta protect yourself very well when you use orthopedic. Well, now you gave away the secrets yeah. of the protectables. Yeah, because I always wear, have good ventilation, and make sure it doesn't get on your clothing, you know, and it works. So that's a very good piece of advice. Yeah, uh, thank you. By working with uh, uses that safe stuff. Okay. How do you mix it? What? Equal, equal thoughts? What? I mean, that's it. Yeah, gallon of water. You use uh, a teaspoon, teaspoon. A teaspoon, teaspoon, teaspoon. Oh, okay. So then the other thing is, don't buy any more orchids because that's where your diseases come, diseases come from. And if you do get some, you have to like separate them and watch them until you know that they don't have any bugs or diseases. How long? So I have a separate tree that you had your new orchids in so that you can watch them. A month? Two months? What? How long? How long? You wait like two weeks. How long? You'll know pretty soon. But you gotta wanna keep this stuff out. Okay, now say you does anybody divide their orchids? Yeah, I do. Two. Okay, when you divide your orchids, you can do some of the same stuff. You wanna, you wanna use rubber gloves. Okay, now this is you're gonna divide a two hundred dollar orchid, so you wanna use rubber gloves. Spray the gloves with Clorox to get them sterile, and spray them with hydrogen peroxide to wipe off the Clorox. To, neutralize the Clorox. So then when you cut it, you gotta use a, a sterile blade, uh, which you uh, can have a, you can sterilize a blade with the same stuff, uh, or torch. Yeah. Oh, you should lay a piece of newspaper down so that you're not uh, putting germs on the table while you're Pull it with dividing this orchid, and then you can spray the Clorox on the cuts, and then the hydrogen peroxide on the cut, and then put on the cinnamon. To, to, uh, the cinnamon really acts like an astringent and sucks in the tissues and makes them like close up. How much cinnamon do you put on? How much cinnamon? Yeah, I mean, you just don't get in a you know, bowl full of cinnamon. No, I put my finger in a bowl and wipe it right on it the tip. Yeah. Just rub it in a little bit. Yeah. Get a little bit on my fingertip. The reason I do that because I used to ship orchids all over the world. This guy in Greece said, don't put the cinnamon on the new roots. It sucks them dry and they die. So that's why you want to be careful with the cinnamon. You don't go like this and say, oh, put it on the roots too. That would be good. It sucks the moisture out of the roof too, it kills it. So just put them right on the tip. Matter of fact, uh, one of the really good growers does uh, mix the cinnamon with uh, Elmer's glue. Yeah. Then he uses a Q-tip to put the little, his little cinnamon paste on the, on the cup. Huh? Okay, so these things here, this is that, looks like that leaf spot. Oh, here's one, this is a, this is a sunburn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Spray it, all your plants with fungicide and start using better water. And build a greenhouse and put them in it. <laughs> Some of that looks like old age and sunburn and uh, a lot of sunburn. And that new leaf spot right there. You don't have this bag of these? Yes, I have it bag of Read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let me tell you my tale of woe. 
we left for three weeks. Yeah. We went to Texas. Uh -huh. we came back, and my orchids looked like S H I T. Oh, so I've lost about 20 of them. Oh. Right. I don't think we had that much rain. We had very little rain. Yeah, we've had quite a zero rain. The last few days before I went away, it was raining. A lot. It rained every day while I was away, they said. Do we and have? I could see in my, my cart, there was just much water in my cart, so we got water into the water. Okay. I didn't. If you don't have a, an area where the good strong wind, my plants at the new house, they're not at a greenhouse, they're under a, I call it the grape arbor where it was changed between the trees, or it was changed between <coughs> two poles I put in, or there's a pergola that I put a wooded, uh, what do you call those things? Right. Lattice work on the ceiling, and then you could, I had to go to orchids because orchids like to be up at trees. So they uh, really like to hang. So even though I turn it apart, I hang them up in the, uh, and now they're really proud of it there. And, but the wind, luckily for me, we live where the wind <coughs> blows through like crazy. Back when we had a greenhouse, I had $400 fans, two of them about the one end of the greenhouse, and they would suck air through the greenhouse like crazy. And I ran them. 365, 24, 7, Christmas and everything. See, if you can get enough airflow, the orchids will avoid fungal infections. And uh, if you can keep new stuff from coming in, then it will help you. And if you can govern the rain, oh, one more thing. One of the guys that works in my lab, he's got like a bazillion orchids and a bazillion uh, green eyes. He, he won't let me come over to his house, but he lives over at Daytona, so. Because there was once a week at works in the lab, and he said, I said, haven't you groomed anything yet? You've been working in here for like 10 years now. <laughs> he says, well, our wells, it turned out the well was contaminated with bacteria. Oh, oh. oh. The other uh, county, Wherever people check this stuff, came over and said, You got that here in your well. And I remember many years ago, we had a well that some kid came over and said, Well, test your well. Oh, you got that here. And I said, What's that mean? Because I didn't even know what well was. He said, Well, let's go check your well. I said, Well, where, well, where is it? Where? So the well happened to be in a vacant lot next door and it had a cement cover over the top of it that was like this big. So he lifted it up and says, well, there you go. It's that rat said you're well. That's oh. 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 I said, oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> so we got a better cover and uh, put in a 55 gallon cup of far rock and a, and a thing that metered the water into our house. OK, any other questions? We're done. Did you say you moved? Huh? You have a new house? What did you, you say? You have an old house. <laughs> you know he has not moved recently. Thank you. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. OK, you all set, Amy? It's OK. <laughs> now, don't forget, you can all come over to our house. Just give us a call and see when we're It's home. fascinating. Really? I didn't think anything, that it plants the blue. Because everything has the blue that's up in my trees right now. There's tent pads in the blue, there's uh, brass in the blue, but there's uh, catlin in the blue, and the drum in the blue. It's all up in all these oak trees. It's an amazing place. It is. And who wants about the, the water bowl? Who needs that? No. Okay, who needs this thing that has about all the fungicides in the left? Where's the new one? What I do is I contact you when I ask if I can use it. Oh, okay. So we're all set. If y'all want to take a break, the general meeting starts at 1 o'clock. Okay, so.